Hi everyone, welcome back to Lama Finance and today we're going to talk about how does risk exactly work and right now we're at volume 3 of this Singapore risk series by Lama Finance and you have not, if you have not watched the first two videos please head to the channel and click on these videos to watch them. Lama Finance is a blog on investments, personal finance and dating and today we have all these five topics on our agenda. So first we're going to talk about what exactly are REITs. And next, we're going to cover how does REITs work, you know, at least in the Singaporean context, where to buy REITs, who own REITs, and why you should invest into REITs. So the idea of REITs basically originated from US in 1960. So US Congress actually established this a kind of structure in order to give access to small time investors to invest into those commercial properties or large scale, large portfolio of properties. And Singapore followed suit. So in 2002, Singapore actually listed the first REIT, which is Capital Mall Trust. And as we all know, it's still actively trading on the Singapore exchange as of now. And in May 2019, Singapore exchange actually has a total number of 44 listed REITs and property trusts. And the total market cap has actually exceeded 100 billion SGD at then. And the average yield as of the KPMG report in 2019, 6.5%. And if you watch the previous video, you should know that right now, due to the COVID correction, the average yield for Singapore risk is actually 7.4%. So, what are risks exactly? So basically, uh, looking over here, this real estate investment trust has not much difference from the unit trust that you purchase from the financial advisors out there. And the, the main difference is that risks are securities that are being traded over the Singapore exchange meaning there's a bid and ask price and you just pay whatever they ask for in order to buy the REITs from this stock exchange. So it is a collective investment scheme and it's an entity that's being regulated by the Securities and Future Act of Monetary Authority of Singapore. And interesting thing is that every single manager of a REIT has actually the requirement to be regulated by MAS and need to have a capital markets license for MAS. So basically, all these REITs, they are entities that owns buildings. They in the buildings can be like uh, in, in terms of healthcare, hospitals, can own office, they can own shopping malls. And when the investors, which is us, invest money into these REITs, all these buildings will then collect rental from the tenants and then they are mandated by law to distribute at least 90% of these profits as dividends to the investors. And this is the main thing why we is such an attractive investment instrument to us. So how does REITs work? So let us start from the clockwise direction, starting from manager over here. So the manager of the REIT basically executes the strategic direction. And the job you know, is to enhance the shareholder value that owns the REIT over here. So they also acquire or divest properties and their job is also to appoint the property manager which manages the operations of the portfolio properties itself. Okay, their, their job is to ensure that there are people who rent our properties and ensure that the buildings remain competitive as a shopping mall or as an office to the tenants out there. So we are over here, we are the retail investors and together with us, uh, institutional investors or, or insiders which are the, the people related to capital land also invest into this REIT itself. Okay, I'll be explaining more about this section on who owns REITs later on. So there's a trustee over here. So basically the trustee is different from the manager. Okay, they are independent from each other or should I say they are supposed to be independent from each other. And the trustee's job you know, is to hold assets, meaning Whatever properties that this capital land mall trust owns, the trustee is actually the legal owner of all these properties and their job is to protect the unit holders' rights. Okay, they are supposed to be have the interest aligned with the unit holders. And next, moving on to the sponsor. So for this no this capital land, even though the logo looks similar to the, this one, they're actually different. This is the Capital Land Limited, while this is Capital Land Mall Trust, the REIT itself. So the job of the sponsor is to inject a pipeline of properties into the REITs, and they usually own stakes into the REIT or the REIT manager. And it is better uh, when the stakes are high, meaning the, the interest is aligned with unit holders. 
the more stakes they have in the read, the more likely they want the read to do well also. And next, uh, I believe we also fall into this category as the customers because when we shop at the malls or when we work at the office, okay, all this office or all the, the shops at the shopping mall will then generate revenue in terms of lease payments or rental payments for the REITs. So where can you buy REITs? So firstly, firstly, just now I mentioned about the bid and ask prices on the Singapore exchange. So basically you can buy REITs directly without any hidden fees, basically just paying the brokerage fee. Okay, you can buy REITs from the Singapore exchange over here. However, you want to buy REITs through other channels, you can buy REITs you know, via unit trust on example, the fund supermarket platform, or can buy them as an exchange traded fund. However, these two kinds of uh, access to REITs are REITs that are packaged and sold to customers. Okay, basically this is the a la carte and this is the bundle meal that's being sold to the, the customers as an analogy. So who owns REITs? And we like to use Capital Mall Trust again as an example. So basically Capital Mall Trust units, so as I last checked, has 3.69 billion units. So among all these units, this is 100% of all the shares of these REITs. 1.3% is being owned by the manager of this REIT. 28% by the sponsor Capital Land. And 30% by Tamasic Holdings. So basically, Tamasic Holdings actually own shares of this REIT through Capital Land and other entities. And the public float, or we know as the general investors, actually own 62% of Capital Mall REITs over here. And this is where we stand also. So don't you see that you know, if let's say the sponsor has a higher stake in the REIT itself, it's actually a kind of alignment of interest between the sponsor and us, the retail investors. So why should we invest into REITs? You no, know, I have actually summarized the three main reasons why you should invest into REITs. So the first is that the capital returns and the yearly dividend yields has actually exceeded and outperformed that of a Straits Times Index. We can often see these headlines as REITs hit an average total returns of 23% in 2019. However, STA only clocks 9.4% total return in 2019. You can see that as REITs performance definitely has outperformed greatly that of STI. And as I mentioned, if you watched the previous video, you should know that the average yield of Singapore REITs now as of May 2020 has already hit 7.5%. The second reason I have is that REITs is actually a tax-friendly investment instrument to not only Singaporeans but also to overseas individuals. I repeat again, individuals, because the tax treatment is different for corporates or other kinds of entities. So basically, uh, Singapore does not carry implement any withholding tax if you want to invest into REITs as a foreign individual investors and REIT distributions has no corporate nor personal income tax if you invest into REITs as a Singaporean individually too. And this is something really very wonderful because corporate tax is 17% in Singapore. Without this 17%, the returns is way higher and this probably explains why the yields or the total returns often exceed that of other kinds of uh, financial instruments or should I say STI also. So the reason is that I feel that Property is something that is eternal. Property is what we know as real assets, like gold, like silver. It's just that they give out this positive cash flow. Property is also not easy, easily susceptible to disruptive technologies. Land is scarce, especially in countries like Hong Kong and Singapore, as every population growth is pretty predictable that land value and property prices will continue to increase in future for Singapore and Hong Kong. So hope that you have learned something from this video and I'd like to give thanks to all these different websites for making this video possible. And basically I've really uh, gathered a lot of data from SGX, Funds Supermart, the PWC report, KPMG report and I'd like to thank you know, the Capital Mall Trust website to which provided us with all this useful data and information. Once again, thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please remember to click like and subscribe to this channel for future risk video and share this video with any friends you know who wants or wish to get started in risk investing. Once again, thank you.